Welcome to Katherine Raker's World. Innovation. Culture. Adventure. Fashion and health. Artists. Destinations. Traditions. This is Catherine Raker's World. Hi, this is Catherine Raker of Catherine Raker's World, our syndicated TV show, and let's just talk our syndicated <laughs> radio show. You may be familiar with the New York Times bestselling and award-winning author, Joanna Ho. Her new book is We Who Produce Pearls, an anthem for Asian America. It's an uplifting call to an action picture book that highlights Asian American history and celebrates the richness and diversity within the Asian American identity and serves as a reminder of our self-worth, our legacy, and most of all, our destiny. And it's got... Bold pop art style graphics and lyrical phrasing distinguishing this powerful picture book. And that's from the Publishers Weekly. And I'll tell you, you have a lot of wonderful recommendations, but you know, I think that the cover of the book is absolutely gorgeous. And I want to welcome you to my show, Joanna. And it is beautiful. So <laughs> let me ask you this question. Why? Now, did you decide, why now did you decide to do this this gorgeous book? Why? Well, that's a great question. Thanks. I actually think, so this is my ninth book. And I think that if you look at my body of work, so much of it, it feels like it's building up to a book like this. Speaks oh, okay. Asian American identity, speaks to the power in the community of the understanding our history and um, of solidarity work. And the story for this book specifically is really that um, my editor approached me. It's at the height of the pandemic at a time when anti-Asian violence and anti-Asian rhetoric was really prevalent in the United States. And she said, you know, we really need a book for kids that really highlights our histories and our stories and our power and our community together. And so I felt such great responsibility and overwhelming sense of, you know, I don't know if I'm the right person, but it feels like this is exactly what I want to be writing. And she also said, I'd love for Amanda Pongotapakia to illustrate it. She's never illustrated, but she does such incredible art. Mm -hmm. And so I researched the book for a year. And ultimately what I hope people take away from this book is just, again, the importance of knowing our history, so much of which has been um, erased has made made invisible and understanding that we have collective shared experiences mm -hmm. that to really know how connected we are and that we have power in our solidarity and our voices if we choose to use them. I think that it's great that you're doing this um, because you can see, I can't wait to get the book. I'm going <laughs> to send you my book, but okay. I can't wait to get the book because number one, I can't wait to see all of the pearls you have in it, not just pearls, but all the historical part of it, right? Isn't it a lot of it in pictures or what, Joanna? Yeah, so it's really written poetically. It's written as like a poem, very lyrically. So the text is very sparse. It's like a poem. And then in the back matter, there are several pages of like guiding questions that are connected to each page of the book. So okay. every page is inspired by so much history. And so though it's written lyrically, you can look at the back matter and see, hey, these are invitations and starting points where I can learn about the history right. that inspired the words on each page. So there's a lot that's contained in a really small package, but it's very, very layered. And what I would also say too, is that the United States also covers up our history. We erase so much. You can see that even today in all the book banning. How long did it take you to actually publish the book? Oh, um, from beginning to end, it was probably like three years. So a year of research um, and writing. And then Amanda took a few years, probably a year and a half to do the art and then another year to put it all together. That's wonderful. And it's actually going to be out. Is it out now? Already yeah. out in April. Yeah. Oh, can't wait to see it. Have you, are you going to do an audio book with it, Joanna? 
I'm not sure. I don't think there is one yet, but hopefully eventually. The, <clears throat> the title, We Who Produce Pearls, why that? Oh, yeah. I mean, I feel like, so the story there is after I did all this research and started to sit down and write the book, I went back and looked at poetry from Angel Island. So for folks who don't know that history, Angel Island, there's an immigration station. It's in the San Francisco Bay. And many people from across Asia and Russia came to the U.S. through Angel Island. But unlike Ellis Island, it was very not welcoming. So people were detained, especially Chinese immigrants were held um, and interrogated sometimes for years. And so while they were there, they carved poetry into the walls. And so I went back and I looked at some of that poetry. And there was one poem where um, a man had written that he was gazing out at di distant mountains and clouds and his tears were forming like pearls. And so when I saw the word pearls, that sort of unfolded, like opened up the idea of how I would write the book. Mm -hmm. And if it's very symbolic of taking a history in which there's a lot of injustice and oppression, but knowing that that doesn't define us as a community, it's something that we've right. taken and built around and that we've used to showcase like our strength and our beauty and our power. I am glad you wrote it right now because there's a lot of younger people that don't know what happened to the Asian community, especially during the war, the war and after the war. I think people need to understand that every culture has had something to deal with, right? But your culture, unfortunately, had a rough time of it, especially um in California and other places am I correct yeah I mean I think that the book captures that's just like one what happened to the Japanese in the war and um but it captures so much history of hundreds of years be you know before and then certainly the years after that captures just so much of the depth of why we came here how we came here like the impact of Western imperialism and globalization, uh -huh. and ancestral homelands, and ultimately just how we've always built communities and risen up and worked together to really overcome and to, to really tell our own stories. Right. I think so too. And I think doing the stories and the poetry, or is that what it is? Poetry is really important because it really gives people an idea. And especially with all of the artwork in it, right. You know, um, the people who are included in this uh, back matter, like the writers and activists of the Vietnam or the Viet Thai Nguyen and Helen Zia. Can you pronounce those names for me, please? Viet Thanh Nguyen and Helen Zia. Yes. And the victims of the An Atlanta spa shooting and why their stories are important to include. Can you tell me that? So I feel like, again, the back matter is really expensive. These are three individuals, Helen Zia specific level, we'll talk about her really briefly. So in the wake of the murder of Vincent Chen, which happened in Detroit, which really Detroit, um, which really galvanized the Asian American movement really was the catalyst for modern day unification across Asian communities. And Helen Zia was a leading activist in that movement and continues to be one today. I met her actually a few months ago for the first time and was fangirling <laughs> so hard. But so I feel like all of the individuals or movements or people or events that are included in the back matter are again, just invitations for people to continue to learn about the richness and the depth of the history and the people and the, um, just yeah, and I and I really wish the hate would stop. Yeah, for real. I mean, this has gotten to the point where right now that every culture is different, every country is different. Mm -hmm. And until you know the history of these countries and the culture and the customs, and that's what I delve into. I've lived in Singapore, Turkey, Spain, and England. Mm -hmm. And the first thing I did was dive into the all the community. And that's what you have to do, I think. And one of the, the questions I have for you is when you were growing up, mm -hmm. did your mother and father or grandparents, you know, when you were little, did they tell you the stories of their life and, and what happened? The ancestry part of it? Oh, I mean, I don't think that I actually, they didn't talk very much about a lot of their own personal stories or family stories. These are things that I've started to learn more as I've become an author and started to ask more questions. 
So it's something that I'm also uncovering and learning about myself and my own family, which has been such a beautiful point of connection and understanding for right. me personally. And, and do you have a lot of relatives that you, that have they seen the book? Yeah, a lot of people have. It's been out for a couple months, so it's been really nice. Like I've been able to go on tour and see lots of family actually on tour all over the country. So lots of people um, have been just so supportive as they always are. Thank you so much. And thank you so much. You <laughs> are just a gem. Absolutely. <laughs> see you. Take care. And don't forget to go to our website at, <laughs> what's your website again? Oh, it's joannahowrights.com. Same as my email, but .com. All right. And thank you so much for joining me. And our website is katherinerakersworld.com and letsjusttalk.com. Thank you so much. And have a beautiful you. day. You too.